So one of the more difficult things that I've found to articulate is what um, what I call true discipleship or the Nazarite vow, some of the some of the inner workings of the way Jesus taught his uh, his disciples during his ministry, and some of the behaviors and the reasons why people have to have to operate a certain way. One of the central tools that we can use is not just the vow of the Nazarite in um, number six, uh, one through twenty one, but also the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount covers a lot of really interesting things. Um, it goes into great detail, but the rest of the parables also um, teach us a significant amount. But the other thing that we can't miss is the actions that Jesus takes when he heals people and the way he operates with people. You know, uh, spit and mud and covering somebody's eyes so that then they can see. So the point is, um, you put somebody in a vessel and you block their vision so they can't see. You know, think of like um, Saul on the way to Damascus. He, um, he had scales fall from his eyes after, uh, after a three-day period of time, right? Um, what happens is somebody's eyes are covered, they can't see, they can't understand, and then when their eyes are uncovered and they see the reality around them, they wake up to instantly understand kind of how things, how things work and they change. They're different, different people. And I think that that's the idea, the best way to describe the idea of, of discipleship. So a couple of the rules for discipleship that, that are interesting and can't, can't be overlooked is you have to hate your family and yourself, and then you can pick up the cross and carry it yourself. And Jesus sent his disciples out to make more disciples, every corner, right? Um, you, have, you have to go out and find people in create more disciples and sort of take over the world, right? So Jesus warned of the leaven uh, of, the, of the Pharisees, and that leaven is like pride. Um, it's, um, it's drunkenness on pride, it's piety, it's being pious, it's making yourself look better than everybody else. That's the, that's the leaven or the levity that a pious person would have as a, as a Pharisee. So the opposite of that is what Jesus was teaching his disciples. So discipleship is humility, it's being grounded, it's being quiet, it's praying in silence, it's praying to God alone and you'll be rewarded for, for that. Um, according to the Sermon on the Mount, you um, are anointed, you have to uh, uncover yourself and make yourself seen and known, but silent. So Jesus uses riddles and he taught his disciples parables to, to accomplish this. But the, the point is, in order for us to be able to find disciples in, in the real world, not, not the ones in the Sunday school classroom, we have to be willing to sort of look around outside of the church organization, outside of what we understand, look outside of our preconceived notions and belief systems, and then we can find the disciples of Christ. And when we find those disciples of Christ, there are certain rules, there are rules of engagement and the way people, people can interact. And Jesus explains that. It's all about free will. It has to be free will. Um, he demonstrated that with, with Nicodemus. He didn't, he didn't force him. Um, the young, rich uh, ruler, he didn't force him. Um, he answered the question that the young, rich ruler asked. Um, which is sell everything. If you want to do, um, if, if you want to, if you want to go completely in, you have to sell everything, and then when you sell everything, give to the poor, um, and then you can follow. Um, what Jesus didn't say is that's literally like what you have to do. So you have to give it all up. You have to sell everything. In other words, give up your uh, your old ways, your piety, your the perspective that you had, and then give to the poor because you have to um, you have to break. You have to turn your head. Uh, Matthew 13, 13 to uh, 15 is important because it says that you have to be able to turn your head to be healed. So you have to turn your head and you have to see the poor and you have to give to the poor. So you have to give to the poor what you've found, what you've discovered. And by doing so, you feed them and you feed them um, a, a spiritual lesson, but you feed them words and truth and knowledge and love and caring and kindness. It's not, it's not an actual food. It is food, but it's not food, right? So it's more about um, inclusion and it's more about uh, finding a way to feed the soul. It's not um, it, it, it's not honey um, like Jonathan ate in the wilderness. It's not the scroll like um, Ezekiel ate or John ate. Um, it's not uh, um, you know bread necessarily. It, the the idea is you're um, you're you're consuming a spiritual lesson, knowledge, and understanding. What comes out of somebody else's mouth and encouragement and 
wonder and love and awe. So that's discipleship, finding a way to communicate that without being seen, but being fully visible, awaiting a chance, uh, like the 10, um, the 10 virgins with, uh, with the lamp oil and um, only five were able to enter with the, with the bridegroom. The point is you have to, um, you have to be visible, um, you have to be that lampstand, and you have to let your lamp shine, and you can't let your you can't let your lamp go dim. Otherwise, you might not be seen when it's time, and you might not be called when it's time. And that that's the idea of, of real discipleship, biblical discipleship. Um, and sure, we come and do that in in the church today, and, and that and that's totally fine. It's the best we understand, and we want to do the best that we can. Um, but as as a real disciple in the church, we need to shift our mindset a little bit. And as a disciple, we need to recognize. Um, if we want to take that mantle on, we have to recognize that we have to reach out. We have to give up our, our prior thinking. We have to break down our, um, our understanding and our belief system so that we can um, continue to, to grow and seek those who actually want to be part of the church and part of the body of Christ, those who are cast out. And that's, that's what my mission is all about, is find, finding a way to connect those dots and get people to understand kind of, kind of the, way, the way discipleship works. And, you know, I, I, I hope that I'm able to, to do that. Um, it's, a, it's a strong calling, but it's, it's very difficult to convey um, some of these more difficult things um, because it goes against well-entrenched doctrine. But that's also something Jesus taught us about, which is to... Um, uh, we need to turn away from the traditions of men because they're not of God. Um, so we need to analyze, we need to look at what we believe and what we understand and the way we behave and analyze that in respect to the other teachings of Christ. Don't find ways to, um, to back up the way we think, find ways that we're wrong. James 3, 1 and 2 says every single teacher is wrong. Every single teacher, every philosopher is wrong. Every pastor is wrong. Every priest is wrong. Every Sunday school teacher is wrong. We're all wrong about something. We may be right about the vast majority, 90%, 95%, 99.99%, .99%, but there's something we got wrong. And those are the things that we need to seek out and try to understand what we don't understand. And by doing so, we're going to have a better, um, a better feel for how... Um, how we should operate in the uh, in the greater church and the greater love um, of of Christ, so that we can usher in maybe a new um, a new revival of sorts. Anyway, I'm excited to uh, to join the journey with you guys. God bless.